It's installed. Welcome to the new Proxmox world. After walking through the installation process of Proxmox, the machine will reboot and you'll be staring at a command prompt where it will give you the actual URL of the Proxmox machine. That should mirror the IP address that you assigned during the installation process. Point a web browser to that URL and it will look something like this. This is the IP address I assigned and the port number that Proxmox set up, 8006, to access it. And as soon as you point the, URL, the, the web browser there, you're going to see this logon prompt, right? The username will be root. That'll be the default one that it creates. And you'll assign that password during the installation process. Hit login and boom, you are presented first off with a scary message and behind it, the entire Proxmox environment. Now, this scary message, let's talk about that for a second says you do not have a valid subscription for the server now right there a lot of people are like oh no features disabled no 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 no. remember proxmox is free what it's saying is you don't have a valid support license for this so if if something goes wrong on this you're you're on your own which in a production environment probably not what you want you want to go purchase a, a support subscription for for something so that if, if something goes wrong you can call and get some help so this will pop up every single time that you log in that's okay just click on okay and you are now presented with the interface itself First off, let's get familiar. And, and I would encourage you, take some time, go through, click around, see what's there. Over on the left-hand side is one of the biggest sections that you'll wanna get familiar with. On the top is the data center. The data center represents the perspective of all the servers. Underneath that is the first server that we've installed. I should have called it Proxmox 1. So as we add more Proxmox servers, right, you can, you can see them right there. We can, we can rename it at a, at a later time. But the commands that you get and the options that you see right here affect all the servers that are in your cluster. Now, we haven't clustered servers in here, nor will we do clustering in this getting started series. It's a little bit more of an advanced topic. But, but you can see the perspective. As you add servers, they're just going to be whoop, you can start migrating, uh, doing live migrations of virtual machines underneath here, which means as the machine is running, you can actually have it copy and start running on a different server with no downtime. You can have multiple servers clustered together to where if one server goes down, the other server automatically takes over and continues running that virtual machine. I mean, it's just tons of cool stuff that you can do, but I, I, I'm, off, I'm off the deep end. We're just getting familiar right now, right? All of that will be seen from this data center perspective. And if you click on the summary, this will show you all of the, the systems that are running. Now, I, I, by the way, I, I came back and did this getting familiar with the interface at the end. So I had a few things in the interface that I could show you uh, that we're gonna be configuring later. So, so know that, that there's not virtual machines automatically running uh, in, the, in the cluster like you're seeing right here. Like it's showing, hey, I've got you know, one of them running, consuming memory of my 16 gigs of RAM that I, that I have available, right? Right here. From the data center perspective is the storage. Now I have already added some storage to this. It's some NFS storage right there, uh, which is Linux based storage. And you can see it's, it's on a, actually a Synology uh, DS1618 uh, NAS, it's network attached storage. And I mapped that up again, I'll show you how to do that later on in the series so that we could store our disk images and our ISO images there. But you have the option of mapping up all of these. Now check it out. That is at the data center perspective, which means when you map up storage, it's automatically available for all the servers in the data center. That's powerful. That's really cool. Um, so you don't have to map storage to every single one of the, of the hypervisors, right? So, you know, as you go down, this is where you can also configure your user credentials. Like if you want to add additional administrators here is where your backup options are for the data center. If you click on the server itself, this is now focused in on that specific servers. It says, Hey, you've got 24 CPU right now with your one virtual machine you're using like 0.1% of your overall uh, uh, computing power right there, which I'm like, yes, I have so much more that I can grow, uh, in, at least in this lab environment, right? Um, you can see right here that, that uh, I, I can go into the notes uh, that I put for this server. Maybe I have some notes that I want to add. So every single time I come in here, I go, oh, that, you know, it's kind of like a, my own little documentation for the server. If I want to access the shell of this server, now I can SSH straight in, but man, 
That is convenient. Look, I'm automatically there with the login that I used uh, to get into Proxmoch, which is root, which means I have uh, full permissions. And this is, you know, if I'm, I'm familiar with a, uh, a Linux environment, I can, I can uh, you know, do essentially all the Linux commands, which I'll show you as we go through. Your network options are right here. How many uh, NICs that it's recognized on here. Uh, the IP address is where you can do your IP address change and all the network options, setting up DNS mappings, updates for the server. <laughs> Okay, I'm, I'm done. I, 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 I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna stop saying, I'm gonna show you that later. We do have a specific video later on on how to update your server. We'll talk about that then, but right now you can see this is saying, hey, there's no updates available right now, but it will continue to check and report if there are any. Uh, firewall features to, to put up a, a firewall on a per server basis. basis. Uh, using the disks of this local server. And again, we're, we're focused on this. By the way, if you expand this, you'll see the virtual machines that we have running. And you can see I've got one of them not running and one of them running, uh, uh, as well as all the storage mapped to that individual server, right? So on here, I'll be able to manage this individual virtual machine. So you can see I'm clicking on this Ubuntu, which is VMID 101. I can see all the you know backup options, replication options, snapshots, uh, if I've taken any snapshots, which I did, uh, called fresh install. And, and now here's all the changes since that. I can roll back to... Oh, so there's, I'm, I'd say I, 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 I'm like, ha, huh, there's so much I want to talk about just going through this interface. But if you're familiar with any kind of hypervisor, this should be giving you perspective on things that you're already familiar with, right? If you want to shut down, reboot, pause this virtual machine, right? You want to open a console, which does KV, you know, it opens a, 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 what's the, oh, you know, the, the remote screen share VNC. Thank you. VNC uh, session, which is uh, great, but at the same time, it gives you exactly what you're looking for, a remote management of that virtual machine. You can see that I've got, you know, this virtual machine up and running. It's something that we do later on in the series. And, you know, as you just go down this list, you can see this is all the commands that affects this individual server. And, and that's, that's where I'm going to, I'm going to hold back. I, I just, if I go any further, I'm just going to start teaching all of the different features that you can do with Proxmox. That should give you a perspective of, of what this interface looks like. And the only way you're going to get familiar with it is by tinkering around, right? So, so continue on with the, with the videos. Keep moving forward uh, and, and seeing the different things. But know that this is your time. If you've installed Proxmox along with me, click around, see what's available, and get familiar so that you're more and more comfortable with this as you go. It's that simple.